Do you need a portable studio photography setup for cats at the shelter? Do you want something that is portable for product photography? Or do you want just a small set you can pack away and slip in your closet when you're done? In this video, I wanna show you all about my portable photography studio table. This little studio was set up, you could make in most likely less than an hour and cost you less than a hundred dollars. I have used this exact studio setup for over five years, every week at the shelters, and it has held up all that time. I have photographed cats every week, uh, puppies, other small animals, uh, product photography, items for auction, all kinds of things I have photographed on this little studio portable set. Part of the beauty of it is not only the portability, that, that it's inexpensive, it's also completely washable, so it's hygienic, and you have just an endless supply of ideas for background materials. And I'm gonna give you a few ideas for that as well. If this sounds like a perfect studio setup for you, stay tuned for all the details. Monique Renee here, photographer at Silver Paw Studio, and on this channel, I give you tips for photographing animals at shelters and rescues, tips to improve the snapshots of your pets, and some pro photographer insights. If that all sounds great, remember to paw the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. I have taken hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photos using this studio set. I have banged it up, taking it in and out of my car, into my storage unit, into a closet. I've even put it in a duffel bag and flown with it to use it at a conference I was teaching at. If you have seen my Cat Photography 101 video that is on Skillshare, there's a link down below, you'll have seen a little bit more of me using this table in action, but I wanted to be sure that I told all everyone here on YouTube about this table because I do get questions about this quite a bit. As you probably know, space is generally very limited at animal shelters, which was the original brainchild of this setup. I chose a small, about three foot square table that actually folds in half. At the time, it was about $35. I looked up recently, a table like this that folds in half is gonna run you about $60. But if you get the one that doesn't fold in half, just a regular kind of card table or that you play games on, that's gonna be about half the price. So keep that in mind. I chose a plastic table because it is lightweight and it's fully cleanable. And you might already have a table like this at your home or your shelter that you can just use for this purpose. Sometimes you can get these tables made out of wood or metal. I chose plastic because I am gonna drill two small holes in it. So I wanted to be sure that I could get through that material. Another consideration is you want to look under the table where you're gonna drill those holes and there needs to be enough of a lip on the front of the table here to do that and enough of a clearance in the back for the bolt to go through. I've taken the backdrop material off of the table for now because I wanna show you the PVC piping that I use for this. Let's, uh, let's take it apart. <laughs> What I've got is three lengths of PVC piping, and they just come apart like this. There's nothing to it. They just slide together. So these are my three lengths of PVC. You'll notice they're, they're gonna make a three foot square about the size of this table. And that's because this is the size of the table. Obviously size your PVC to your particular table and how much room you might have or might need. I like this height. Cats are never going to be any taller than this. Uh, but if you think you're going to be photographing tall objects, be sure you can make it bigger. I like the PVC instead of metal piping, partly because it's lightweight and partly because I was able just to have the hardware store cut this to the right length for me. For the top piece, I chose to put elbows here and screw them on uh, because this is always just going to stay on here. And then all I have to do is nothing to these. 
<laughs> You'll also notice that this is a three quarter inch PVC pipe. And that's gonna come in handy when we use it for our backdrops. I'm gonna turn the table around and show you what I've got going on on the backside to hold this whole frame up. Back here, because this is a folding table, you can see the seam here. I needed these to be able to move out of the way when it gets folded up. So I've got these little T's and they are secured on here with a bolt and there are washers and a wing nut on the back. So this swivels like this. So you can tell that this is inset a little bit. You wanna make sure that your top rail, you cut just slightly smaller than the full width of this table. So it'll go nice and neat into this T. So all I've done is drilled a hole in the top of the T so that the bolt can go all the way through and through the length of the table right here. And there's a little washer here just to help with stability. So you can see how that goes all the way through. On the other side of the table, underside, we use the washers to keep it sturdy in place with the little, whoo, <laughs> with the wing nut. So the wing nut just screws onto there and you can picture that in the table here. And here's where I've got the little hole drilled actually in the plastic table. And there's a little bit of clearance between this leg of the table and where I need to put that wing nut. But what's awesome is then this can just swivel. So when I fold up the table, this swivels out of the way so the table can actually close and be portable. And it's really that simple. So when I set it up, I put that up, the, the rail goes in here and across the top and we're, we're good to go. Setup is super, super easy. Here's the actual table. You can see about what size it is. Here's those rotating T's. And then it folds in half. And all we do is set it down, pop it open, turn it to scare the kitties. Fold up the legs. Now we flip it over. Here, ready to go. All my PVC pipes, put one side in, put the top in, put the other side in, swivel that up. Bam, good to go. Now, here is where your fun and creativity will really go crazy. All of the background materials you could possibly use. Anything that you could put a little clamp around, you can put up here. Now, I'll show you what I've got. Uh, these really inexpensive clamps that you could get at any store. They come in all different sizes. They're nice and strong. They're plastic and washable, lightweight, and they'll hook onto all parts of this table. So you can see it fits right here, and it fits up on here. Bam. I love these little clamps. I usually have uh, eight or 10 around at all times. The material that I use most of the time is this piece of what's called Translum. It's from Savage Universal and you probably know them most for their paper backdrops. I've got one here, but this is really cool. It's a lightweight plastic material and it's meant to like shine light through the background for special effects, but I love it for this. I have the double thickness kind. I have used this piece for over two years now, probably about two and a half, this exact piece, and you can use both sides. So it's smooth, but it's not so smooth that it's slippery for the animals. I've put stickers on here. I've taped banners on here. I've done all kinds of things with this piece of translum. 
show you how easy it is to put up. I've actually cut this out of my big roll of translum. So I still have another huge roll that I use for other projects or for bigger sets. got the seamless look, but you can use it over and over and over again, as, uh, as I have done. And this table is just the right, right width to use the same clamps on the table as I use on the piping frame. But the other cool thing that you could use as backdrop material is, of course, the Savage Paper that we already talked about. This is really inexpensive. I was able just to go to my local camera store and they have a few um, sizes and colors available. So I was pretty lucky there. Um, looks like I haven't used this, but I've used my gray, I've used my dark blue. This paper is amazing. A lot of people who work at the shelters use this Savage Seamless paper, um, but you can just cut this to size and clamp it right on the table the exact same way that you do the translum. And so if you don't have access to some you know, translum paper, you can actually just use craft paper. And that's all this is. I went to the teacher section at the local hobby store or teacher supply store, and this is the paper they would put on the back of their bulletin boards in the classroom. So it's just the right size, as you can see. Bam. And all I have to do is clamp that, which I've done, to the frame as well. Uh, this. This type of paper doesn't last as long as the pro grade or the translum, but if you're doing a special project and they want a particular color, sometimes it's easier just to go down and get the uh, roll of teacher paper that's just a few dollars and some really cool different colors. So I love the idea of using just some classroom paper too. The last background material I want to tell you about is actually the first type I ever used. Again, if you've watched my Cat Photography 101 course that's on Skillshare, I talk about this a lot and it's really simple. Again, you might have this around your house and it's just lengths of fabric. This is the exact piece I started off with five years ago when I first started using this table. I wanted to find something that was neutral and could be washed all the time. So I think this place is a um, anti-pill type of fabric. Um, so just ask at your fabric store. This has a side that's a little more smooth and a little a side that has more texture. So depending on the look you're going for and how it matches your kitties, this gray was worked perfectly for me. I didn't have to worry about getting the whites pure white. And I can also have a little more leeway with natural light using this gray fabric. Now, sometimes at a shelter, you're gonna be back up to a window. So it's nice to get this about twice as long as you think you're gonna need, because then you can drape the extra fabric over the back. Let's put this on the table. You can see it's staying here just fine. So, it's staying here without any clamps, but the minute you get a cat on here, they're gonna slide around and move all the fabric. So I suggest you always use the clamps. And you also want it to be safe. The other great thing about fabric is see how it drapes over? So if you get a little bit down here, if the kitty sits on the edge of the table real cute, you don't have to worry about underneath the table. That's a piece of fabric you just go get at the fabric store. What other options do you have? Here's one. Do you have any of these sitting around the house? This is just a throw that you might have on your couch. So, and you can use this. If you have a small enough table, I have found these are generally just big enough to use for this kind of a project. So if you have some of these in some different and interesting colors, or you see that they go on sale at your local store, pick a couple up because you might like to have them in your arsenal. Bonus tip here, if you keep these with you when you go to the shelters, this is also a great thing to put in a little cat bed or have them curl up with. Let me show you something. So you could curl this up like this. 
and they can sit in their little bed because oftentimes the shelters just have old towels and blankets there. So having something nice and neutral is good to have here. There you go. <laughs> One thing I do want to note with this type of a studio setup is safety. Obviously, we're about three feet off the ground here, so you need to have a helper when you use a table like this with an animal. And I have the helper stand off to one side or the other, and the animal's just right here, and I'm over there with my camera. So keep that in mind with this type of elevated table as well. So you might be wondering, Monique, you said this was completely portable. Where do you put all these pieces, right? I'm gonna show you. I have this very inexpensive light stand bag I got at the local camera store. I want to say it was about $25 and it is perfect for this. It's just the right width, see? And so everything fits in here. I put the clamps in here, I put the PVC pipes in here, and the PVC pipes go in the middle of my transom and split it right in here. And this all zips up and I've got the handles, good to go. So when I go into the shelter, oftentimes I only have this bag and this folding table and I'm ready. An alternative to a light stand bag is just a duffel bag. I've tried to use a tote bag, but these tend to be a little bit long and they want to fall out, but a duffel bag would work just fine too. That's it. Those are all the nitty gritty details of my portable studio table set. What do you think? Do you think you'll give this a try? If you do, let me know. Comment below that you've tried it. If you found this video helpful and you think somebody else might, feel free to share it as well. And remember to paw that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of these fun videos. And as always, I wish you many whoops, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's. Good job, babe. Oh, what a good girl. Who are you such a good You're such a good girl. That was so awesome. Okay, did you love your treats? Yeah, that was good stuff. Okay. Alright, bye. Good job. Good job.